Good day, I'm Patrick Bracher from Norton Rose Fulbright. My first file on demarcation started in the year 2000 when I was representing the South African Insurance Association in trying to demarcate the line between insurance products and medical scheme products. Now that has been going since the year 2000. We're now in the year 2017 and the new demarcation regulations will change the entire landscape from the 1st of January 2018. Let me explain to you what the role of the insurance companies have been, and this goes back before the Medical Schemes Act of 1998. The insurance companies have filled a gap in the market since the 1850s. In the 1850s in England, you could catch a train, and with your train ticket, you'd get accident and health insurance for the entire journey. You could buy a daily newspaper and get accident and health cover for a day. You could have a weekly newspaper and get it for a week. So this is as old as insurance itself. Now, the Medical Schemes Act says that nobody can do the business of a medical scheme unless they are specifically empowered to do so. And the business of a medical scheme, they say, is to defray medical expenses and to pay medical expenses in return for a premium. Now, that is, of course, what insurance companies do and have always done as well. The story from government is that medical schemes are being affected by insurance products. They say people will take out a cheaper insurance product because medical schemes uh, premiums are so high and they will therefore not join medical schemes. Now since 2000 when I went to the Council for Medical Schemes with an actuary we've asked for proof that the insurance industry is affecting the medical schemes industry and to this day it hasn't appeared. There's a long response document from the National Treasury last year, 57 pages, not a word about how insurance products have affected medical schemes and medical scheme members. So my point is really that there's no logic in this, and let me say why there needs to be a rational reason. Section 27 of the Bill of Rights says that everybody is entitled to access to health care. Now that is a primary right, it's a full right under the Bill of Rights. And the government is supposed to make, take progressive measures to allow you to exercise the right to primary health care and health care in general. Now what have they done? Since 1998, when the Medical Schemes Act came out, there's been no effort to give health care to people who can't afford medical schemes. And those are the people I'm talking about. It's the disadvantaged people who are in a steady job but just not enough money to afford the high premiums for a medical scheme. Now who is going to look after those people? Who's going to look after them for hospital care, for demarcation regulations which cut out their right to get extra money if they happen to get diabetes? And this happens in all sectors of society. So what do they offer instead? The government say we'll give you this. We'll give you national health insurance. Well national health insurance we know from figures needs about 220 billion rand which we haven't got. Then they say the Competition Commission is doing a study of this and we're going to get medical expenses down. Well, the Competition Commission said they won't be able to do anything till at least 2018 and who knows how long to get legislation after that. Then they say, well, we've got some new Twin Peaks legislation. We're going, to, we're going to regulate the industry vigorously and we'll sort you out. That also isn't in place yet. The Act hasn't even gone through Parliament. And finally they say we're going to develop what they call a low-cost benefit medical option. And you'll get a medical scheme which doesn't have to give you prime benefits but will give you a low cost option. That hasn't been developed since 1998. So, the disadvantaged people entitled to rights under Section 27 to health care, the government obliged to progressively provide those rights, none of us have those rights. And from 1 January 2018, a policy that you may have been paying for 15 years will be taken away from you and substituted by something which is far less. The government keep talking about treating customers fairly. That is the mantra at the moment, and it's a very good mantra. But what about them? What is their role in treating the ordinary disadvantaged people who are not rich enough to afford medical schemes to get what they've always had, and that is a positive insurance product? We just seem to have gone from being a Robin Hood society to being a Sheriff of Nottingham society. Thank you.